I am Dr. Shannon Walker, NASA astronaut, and I am getting ready to fly on the Crew-1 mission to the International Space Station. Crew-1 is the first, what we're terming, operational mission of the Crew Dragon vehicle to the International Space Station. And what we mean by operational mission is that we are starting the phase where we are flying astronauts, NASA is flying astronauts to the International Space Station on commercial crew vehicles. The Crew-1 mission is following uh, what is termed the Demo-2 mission, which was a test flight of the Dragon crew vehicle. Um, one thing that's very different about our flight versus Doug and Bob's is we'll have four people. Um, how do four people live and operate on such a vehicle? And then, of course, the main mission is to deliver crew to the International Space Station for our uh, long job to, uh, to start spending six months living and working on the space station. So my role for my upcoming flight is sort of broken into two pieces. There's my role on the Crew Dragon and there's my role on the International Space Station. On the Crew Dragon, um, I am one of the mission specialists and so a lot of my job I think is to help uh, help people understand how you operate on that spacecraft with four people as opposed to just two people like Doug and Bob flew. Um, how you allocate the various tasks that need to be done that uh, make sense and can get things done efficiently with four people in a small space. Um, on the space station, my role is going to be very much like it was last time. Uh, do what the ground needs us to do, whether it's maintenance or um, experiments, and just execute the task at hand. Well, I think what's interesting about sc spacecraft generically is that underneath it all, spacecraft are spacecraft. They're all the same in the fact that they've got uh, tanks, fuel, engines, how they produce electricity, and then the details come out in how crew interact with them, how what kind of information is presented to the crew, what the crew is allowed to do in terms of troubleshooting, what the ground is going to do. And so what um, the Dragon spacecraft represents to me is just a continuing evolution of, of uh, better computing power that's you know, evolved over the years and different ways that the crew can interact with the spacecraft. Yes, I spent six months on the station previously in 2010, and I am so looking forward to getting back there and having another six months on the space station. It is so exciting to live and work on board the space station, do all the science that we get to do, to look down on the Earth and um, just take in the wonders of the Earth and the universe. When I was there last time, um, I did a whole variety of tasks. It was at the very end of the construction of the space station. So we did a lot of uh, maintenance and getting the station ready to do all the science that we're doing now. And so I think that's one of the main differences It's going to be uh, between my last flight and this flight. It'll be more science, hopefully less maintenance. And before, it was more maintenance, less science. Well, I have spent my entire career at the Johnson Space Center. I actually started out as a flight controller um, working in the space shuttle program. I worked with the robotics side, so I was in charge of deploying and retrieving satellites with the space shuttle. Um, after that, I moved over into working with the space station program, working to get hardware built for the space station and working with our international partners to get hardware built for the space station. Um, one particular notable time I had in that, uh, in that time was I got the opportunity to spend a year in Russia working with our Russian counterparts doing avionics integration, which was really interesting, really neat experience. Um, following that, I went back to the control center, but I had a very different job there. I worked with and eventually ran the group that was responsible for the technical health of the space station. And when you say technical health, I know people sometimes wonder what that means. I think the best analogy is we were the problem solvers when things went wrong. If you've seen the movie Apollo 13, when they said you need to take a round one of these to fit a square one of those, that's kind of what we did on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, I always wanted to be an astronaut. I was about 
four years, yes, I just turned four when we first landed on the moon. And I have very distinct memory of my parents taking me and my older sister out into the backyard and the moon was rising over our house and they pointed up there and said, we have people there. And even at four, I thought that just sounded like the best idea ever. Yeah, it was kind of difficult um, growing up because even though I knew I wanted to be an astronaut, I didn't know what it took to become an astronaut. And so um, I knew that I needed to do well in school, uh, sort of basic things like that. But it wasn't really until I got quite a bit older that I realized um, that I actually did or would have the qualifications to be an astronaut. I think. I think one of the main things is to believe in yourself because most people have a lot more capability than they give themselves credit for. And so when I realized that I had, well, I had seen a new class of astronauts that had been hired for the space shuttle and I was reading in the newspaper what their qualifications were and just going through some of them, I realized I can do that. And um, that was a big turning point from not, knowing, not understanding what it took to be an astronaut to really that day sitting on the couch knowing, yes, I can do that. Um, no, as a kid, I was always interested in math and science. And um, I honestly, aside from not knowing how to be an astronaut, I knew it wasn't something I could do immediately. So I didn't know which path I wanted my career to take. And I figured physics was a nice, generic field in some sense that I could go any direction after I graduated from school. I think it had, uh, growing up in Houston had a huge impact on my life because the Human Space Flight Center, the Johnson Space Center was here. It was in my backyard and so it always had a presence there. Um, I remember coming out as a kid and, and taking a tour and things like that. So it was, it was always there and inspiring to me. Oh, my time in Russia was so interesting and so fascinating. What I look back on um, is the personal connections that I had with, with my fellow engineers and um, colleagues over there. Um, what I have found being part of the International Space Station program, and not just Russia, but our colleagues in Japan and Europe and Canada, is that underneath it all, we all have the same goals and we all have the same passions. and. People are just driven to accomplish this joint goal that we have together. Well, um, my husband is a former astronaut, so he knows very well what it takes to go into space since he flew on the space shuttle four times and spent uh, four plus months on the Mir space station. So I would say uh, my family's probably a little bit different in that regard because uh, we're both very in tune of everything that's going on. I was assigned quite late uh, to this mission, and so my training uh, time has been much, much shorter than the rest of my crewmates. Yes, I was not expecting the call to be assigned, and so um, anytime you get a flight assignment, it's, it's tremendously exciting. It is a big change. Um, my ground duty uh, within the astronaut office was being as part of the leadership team in the astronaut office, so I was more of a management type. And then all of a sudden, Friday I was a manager, Monday I was a crew in training, and so it's a huge shift in how your day goes. So you're training for this flight? Well, there are a few differences in training between training on the Soyuz flight and training uh, for the Crew Dragon flight. Um, one, on the Soyuz, I was trained as the pilot on that spacecraft, and so I had a lot more hands-on flying the spacecraft training. Um, I'm not the pilot on this particular flight, so I do not have to train for those duties. Um, and the other big difference is now the training is in English, and before it was in the Russian language. Yeah, it's very interesting. My first flight, uh, the training flow was three years, and now I'm getting about five months. And so um, I have a lot of experience to fall back on, but we've done very abbreviated uh, training courses on something. So in, in many ways, my training days have been a lot longer and a lot more intense than my fellow crewmates are going through right now. 
SpaceX is a very interesting company. There are so many young people. I always imagine it to be like it was in the early Apollo days at NASA with so many young engineers so passionate about what they are doing. Um, but also in many ways, having trained in spacecraft and for spaceflight all over the world, training is training and it's all about the same. You start off with theoretical work and then you move into the practical inside your spacecraft. Oh, I'm looking forward to being on station, living and working there, and um, just spending time with my crewmates on the station. There's so many things that make living on the space station special. Um, you are in a pretty small environment, although the station is quite large by many respects, but you're with a set group of people for a long period of time. And so you really get to know each other so much better than you have been able to on the ground. We're already a family, but then um, as so many people can relate to being in one place with your family for extended periods of time is, is, uh, is just different. There are so many things that you could do on station. What I like about it is, is every day really is different. You get up and you do something different and you may be doing a biological experiment one day, you may be doing maintenance on equipment the next day, and then the day following that you'll be doing uh, some sort of experiment in chemistry. And so just being able to participate in so many different things I find exciting. Um, I get asked a lot whether or not I'm afraid. Um, I'm not afraid, I'm very excited, but I, the reasons that I'm not afraid is because uh, I know the people involved, I know the engineers who are doing the design work, I know the managers that are making the decisions to say, yes, we are ready to go. And so um, knowing all of that and keeping up with uh, the decisions being made is how I prepare uh, to go to spaceflight. Yes, I have a lot of confidence in uh, the spacecraft Falcon 9 rocket as well as the Crew Dragon vehicle. The Falcon 9 in over its iterations has flown more than 80 times in space and so it is a very solid rocket to fly on. Um, the Crew Dragon vehicle actually has a pretty long history even though we've only flown one with people. Uh, it started off um, from early days as being um, iterated from the cargo vehicles. We've had uh, cargo dragon vehicles go to the space station multiple times and so even though this is early in the crew dragon flights it, it's actually uh, both pieces the rocket and the spacecraft have a pretty extensive history space exploration is important uh, for a number of reasons. It is important for humanity in terms of the science and engineering benefits it brings. It is important for understanding the universe and our place in it. And I think it's important for the world to work, work together on common goals. 20 years of collaboration on the International Space Station. Well, 20 years of having people on the International Space Station. Of course, the collaboration started many years ahead of that. Um, it is fantastic. It is, it is a constant in uh, people's lives. I think it is just tremendously exciting and fascinating to know that kids are growing up today that have always had people living in space and always had the countries working together for science and engineering um, objectives. So, um, 20 years down, hopefully many, many more years in the future. What I get to see from the station is, uh, I get to see the Earth as a whole. Um, you get to see how something that's going on on one place of the Earth really does have effects all the way around the other side. Um, some of it is, is uh, just the human side of what's going on on the ground, our environment, and then a lot of it just has to do with how incredibly fragile our atmosphere is. And that's what gives us life, and um, that's what we need to protect as humans, to protect our home planet.